In 2022, in October, I started my YouTube channel and I've made 58 videos since then. And it's been a hell of a ride. Oh, look at that rock. That's so beautiful. I look like an egg. Oh no. Oh, oh, that is so cool. I am currently in London. In today's video, we're going to do a Batman inspired photo shoot. I actually can't believe my eyes right now. Like <laughs> Okay, I did the most random thing ever. So over the course of creating these videos, I've also created a little workflow for myself. And I wish I knew all this when I started off with YouTube because that would have helped me out a lot. So that's why I'm here to share it all today. So I'm gonna talk about the gear I use, my editing process, how long it takes me to edit a video and how I plan my videos as well. So I'm gonna try and keep it punchy. Let's get into it. The real deal of being a YouTuber. And I just hate that word, YouTuber. It doesn't hit the spot for me. So I posted my first video when I was in Toronto in Canada and I really remember this day so vividly. Welcome in Toronto. I've been here for the past two weeks with my friends, exploring, shooting. I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel ever since I started with photography. But there is always this thought in your head like maybe I should just wait for the right moment to start. But trust me, that moment will never come. You just have to start. Just do it. For me, the reason why I wanted to start with YouTube is that I always posted my photos and I still do on Instagram, but it feels so one-sided. You can't really attach a personality to your page as much as I am right now, because I can literally talk to you and it's like you're there. It's like you're in front of me. So let's start with the basics and that is the gear I use, because let's be honest, we won't get very far without it. I film with the Canon R6 and I've had this camera for three years now. I spent all my money on that camera and it's the best money I've ever spent. And I pair it with the 15 to 35 mil f2.8 just to film the talking head footage like I am doing right now. And when I want to film crispy b-roll, I use the 24 to 105 f2.8 and the stabilization in this lens is mind blowing. I also take photos with this camera. So when I want to film myself taking photos, it's going to be really hard because I only own one camera. But when I need an extra one, that's when I look my boyfriend very nicely in the eye and I ask if he can help me out and then he uses the Sony a7c mark II in combination with a 28 to 70 mil and yeah works great so I'm filming in 25 frames that's what I'm doing right now as well but if I want like slow-mo b-roll I film in 100 frames per second and I just want to say I have not been doing YouTube for very long so I'm still like figuring out what works for me but at the moment this is what I'm doing and it's working but I'm sure in a few I'll add more gear and that is just the life of a photographer because more gear is good. So then when I'm filming, I place my camera on the Manfrotto tripod. I don't have much to say about this tripod. It just works perfectly. It's super steady. I trust it with my life, with my camera. So when it comes to audio, I feel like that is one of the most important things when it comes to videos. Because if your audio is shit, then the whole video is going to be very uncomfortable to watch. So I've been using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus in combination with the Dead Cat. And it is a really big microphone, but I've been using it since the start and it's never let me down. Hello, I'm hiding in the bush. Can you spot me? Hey! <laughs> So one of the things I like to use as well are the DJI mic wireless microphones because I can even stand from a distance and you can still hear me. By the way, I know I'm telling you a whole lot of information right now, but I've also linked all the gear and all the gadgets and everything in the description so you can find it easily. Then for lighting, at the moment, what you're seeing now is just daylight. So I've got my camera in front of a window and I feel like daylight is always so beautiful. Do you want to know something really weird I used to do? I used to use my notebook literally place it underneath me to fill in these shadows in my face can you tell 
it just lights up my face a little bit more. And that's how I used to do it when I would film outside somewhere. So you don't need the most expensive equipment to make something work. Then during my videos, I love to switch it up with POV footage. And for that, I use my iPhone 13 Pro Max in combination with a GoPro harness and a little mount that I can clip my phone on. And I feel like this type of footage makes it feel like you're really there. And personally, I find it so therapeutic to watch. And even for little vlog moments, I feel like the iPhone works perfectly. I can just whip it out, say what I want to say and chuck it back on. And I film in 4K 60 frames. Let's get into editing. I feel like this is one of the most satisfying parts of making the YouTube videos, but it works if your laptop works as well. Cause I used to have the MacBook Pro 2019, I think, and it would crash on me the whole freaking time. And it was so annoying. So as of recently, I did the painful upgrade to the M3 Pro Max and I haven't regretted it at any second. And I always work from an external hard drive like this one from saying so from saying soon saying soon it's an SSD. This prevents my laptop from overfilling. When I started with YouTube, I had zero experience with video editing. So I was like, from the get go, which program would be best to learn? And that's when I went for DaVinci Resolve. And what I like about this is I can make it as complicated as I want for myself. And especially for a beginner, that's pretty nice. I gotta say, I still have so much to learn. And then to keep the flow in the video, I rather show than tell. And with that, I mean, I overlay this talking head with B-roll like this. It just keeps it more entertaining to watch and it really visualizes what I'm saying. And it keeps the video interesting to watch when I film in different locations. Then when it comes to effects, I keep it very simple. So I use a little zoom blur like this, a drop warp like this one, a jitter text and an edge wipe for my before and afters. And I've made a little folder on my hard drive with assets. And in here I can find the sound effects, Instagram handles. So I just drag it in my timeline and I'm good to go. So creating a YouTube video usually takes me around three to four days and this also includes the filming but of course it depends on the type of video like this editing tutorial only took me a day but for example the video I'm making right now this one will take me around two to three days to edit like I was saying I'm not very experienced with video editing so my workflow is a little bit slower which sometimes I find a little bit difficult because my brain is going faster than I can actually edit so I know how I want it but to do it just takes me longer so that all comes with practice and a little bit of pain then the thumbnails which made you click on this video I added these in Lightroom and Photoshop so what I do is I zoom out make the thumbnail very small in Lightroom and then I can see if it's really popping or not yeah I just do my basic adjustments in there maybe jump into Photoshop do some retouching or whatever and then export it and that's how I do it and of course everything that I'm telling you now I didn't suck for my thumb is that a saying in English it is a saying in Dutch and the translation is exactly I'm a dime, which means I'm not making it up on the spot. Ah. I always make sure to write down key points before I start filming. This way I make sure I touch on every subject and I don't miss out on anything. So when I started, I used to write everything in my notebooks. All this text right here, they are videos right now on my channel, which I think is pretty awesome. When it comes to planning, I like to stay organized and especially for big videos. Last week I actually posted a video in which I dedicated one week to street photography. So I hit the streets with my camera seven days in a row. And this was a big video to make because I needed to arrange seven locations, make sure all my gear was charged throughout the whole week. And that's when I use Milanote. And I've talked about them in a previous video as well. I decided to go for the photography mood board. And that looks like something like this. So at the moment, I'm planning a mysterious umbrella shoot. I start off with adding inspirational photos and I've also added a checklist for the props I need to bring to the photo shoot. I love this software. It keeps me just clear in the head and then there's more room for ideas. So I wanna quickly run you through how I use the platform and how it brought my video to life. So this is the board I created. Even if you look at this already, it just looks so satisfying and it is so organized. Oh, it just makes creating the videos a whole lot more fun. So let's start off up here. So in the video, I wanted to share that I have no experience in street photography. So I needed to get out of my comfort zone. And then hopefully by the end of this video, I was better at street photography. Down here, I've written down what the audience can expect. So the viewer will learn the basics of street photography. I'll show my struggles. So everything that was difficult and hopefully you can learn something from that. And the gear side of street photography. And by writing all this down, I really know the aim of the video and the message I wanna bring. And I can make it look as pretty as I want. 
by for example adding little arrows it just makes it all so clear and especially when I share this board with someone they know what the video will be about and I needed seven different locations for this video so this little schedule saved my life and I can easily grab the map and just drag it in here in the column and add where I want to go so for example on Monday I wanted to shoot around Flinders Street station so I could just zoom in okay that's where I need to go okay which time of day in the morning and it just kept the whole week so organized for this video I also needed a little bit of help so I could just send this mood board to the videographer and then he knew exactly where to go and we got some awesome footage That is my favorite part, which is the mood board. Pretty much for every single one of my photo shoots, I make a mood board. For me, it is a must. And if you've done street photography before, then you know that it is quite overwhelming. There is a lot to look at, but when you have a mood board, then you know for which type of shots you need to keep an eye out. So per day and per location, I made a separate area in my mood board. So I just drag in a couple of photos I like and suit the vibe, and then I move it around to make it look good. This is what I made for the business district. And this is what I made for Chinatown. When I was on location, I could just check my mood board and I was ready to shoot. And it's so easy to structure because I can just drag around the columns, place them anywhere I want and make a little checklist, for example, like I did here for the photography and the videography. Here are all the gear I need for the POV footage. Something that I like to create as well is a shot list. If you've seen one of my previous videos, in this one, I made a little short film about how I found this office. To really create the story, I wanted to make sure I captured every shot I had in mind. And since I've got Milanote on my phone as well, I could just scroll through the shot list and check off which shots I already got. the whole short film in two hours. I feel like that was pretty quick, but it really helped that we had a plan and we knew exactly which shots to get. Or, you know, you're just chilling on a bench and all of a sudden the best idea comes to you. Don't wait with writing it down. When I don't write it down, I'll forget. It's the same with when you go to sleep and the best idea comes to you and you're like, oh, you know what? I'll write it down tomorrow, I'll remember. Trust me, you will not remember that idea. And that's when I use my little brain dump page in Milanote. So this is where I write down all my random ideas, even if they're at midnight or under the shower or on a park bench, it doesn't matter. And I will thank myself for it because otherwise I would forget them. And this tool is so simple to use. I can easily just structure the boards, grab the photos, drag it in, make a mood board, make a shot list, make a checklist. I can do it all in here. A lifesaver for when it comes to planning the video. So if you want to try it out, you can Sign up for free, make an account through the link in my description. And if you have any further questions about this, just ask them down below. So that's the real deal of being a YouTuber, quote unquote. I hope you learned something new from this video. Like I was saying, I'm still figuring it out as I go. And it's been so awesome that I can bring you along to the photo shoots and hopefully teach you something along the way whilst having fun as well. So if there's anything you want to see or know about me, just please ask it down below. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and I also hope to see you at my next one. Okay, bye-bye. Doei.